Sudan is situated in northeastern Africa, with 853 kilometers of coastline bordering the Red Sea. It has land borders with Egypt, Eritrea, Ethiopia, South Sudan, the Central African Republic, Chad, and Libya. Sudan is part of the Northern Africa grouping of the UN Geo Scheme. Sudan, once the largest and one of the most geographically diverse states in Africa, split into two countries in July 2011 after the people of the South voted for independence. With an area of 1,886,068 kilometers square, it is the third largest country on the continent after Algeria and the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the 16th largest in the world. The terrain of Sudan is generally flat plains, broken by several mountain ranges. In the west, the Deriba caldera in Darfur is the highest point in Sudan, at 3,042 meters. In the east are the Red Sea Hills. The Blue and White Nile rivers meet in Khartoum, the capital, to form the River Nile, which flows northwards through Egypt to the Mediterranean Sea. Rich mineral resources are available in Sudan, including asbestos, chromite, cobalt, copper, gold, granite, gypsum, iron, kaolin, and lead. In the country, the amount of rainfall increases towards the south. The central and the northern part have extremely dry desert areas, such as the Nubian Desert to the northeast and the Bayuda Desert to the east. According to Sudan's most recent census of April 2008, the total population was 30.9 million, just over 47% were aged 16 years or younger. Roughly two-thirds of Sudan's population lives within 300 to 500 kilometers of Khartoum, concentrated in the Khartoum area. Sudan was already playing a role in world history as early as the first millennium BC. References to Kush are well known in Egyptian inscriptions and also in the works of Greek and Roman authors, as well as in the Bible. The originality of the Kushite civilization in Sudan is one of the indications of the ability of the African continent to nurture an indigenous civilization in ancient times. Eventually, many of the indigenous elements, which derive from African origins, outlived the Egyptian infrastructure and reappeared, more or less unchanged, at later periods in Sudan's history. Islam spread to Sudan from the north after the Islamic conquest of Egypt. Islamization of Sudan is the result of cultural contact between Nubians and Arabs long before the rise of Islam. Together with migrations from the north, Islam gradually changed the nature of Sudanese society. Islam became the most important identity of Sudan. The Funj Kingdom, centered at Sinar on the Blue Nile and the Sultanate of Darfur in the west, flourished in and after the 16th century. Islam is the largest religion in Sudan, and Muslims have dominated national government institutions since independence in 1956. According to UNDP, the population is 97% Muslim, including numerous Arab and non-Arab groups. The vast majority of Muslims in Sudan adhere to Sunni Islam, of Maliki school of jurisprudence. Sharia is the basis of Sudan's national legal system. Throughout the country, the application of Sharia to non-Muslims is to be limited, and courts may not exercise their discretion to impose. In February of 1953, the United Kingdom and Egypt concluded an agreement providing for Sudanese self-government and self-determination. The transitional period toward independence began with the inauguration of the first parliament in 1954. On the 19th of December, 1955, the Sudanese parliament unilaterally and unanimously declared Sudan's independence. The British and Egyptian governments recognized the independence of Sudan on the 1st of January, 1956. At the same time, a mutiny by army officers who demanded autonomy for southern Sudan sparked 17 years of civil war. The National Unionist Party, or NUP, under Prime Minister Ismail Azari, dominated the first cabinet. The government was soon replaced by a coalition of conservative political forces. In 1958, following a period of economic difficulties and political maneuvering that paralyzed public administration, the Chief of Staff Major General Ibrahim Abad overthrew the parliamentary regime in a bloodless coup d'etat. 
General Abaugh did not carry out his promises to return Sudan to civilian government, however, and popular resentment against army rule led to a wave of riots and strikes in late October 1964 that forced the military to relinquish power. The Abad regime was followed by a provisional government until parliamentary elections. In April 1965, a coalition government of the UMA and National Unionist parties under Prime Minister Mohamed Ahmad Majao was established. Between 1966 and 1969, Sudan had a series of governments that proved unable either to agree on a permanent constitution or to cope with problems of factionalism, economic stagnation, and ethnic dissidents. Indeed, the UMA NUP proposed 1968 constitution was arguably Sudan's first Islamic-oriented constitution. On May 25, 1969, several young officers calling themselves the Free Officers Movement seized power in Sudan and started the Nimera era in the history of Sudan. At the conspiracy's core were nine officers led by Colonel Jafar on Nimeri. Numeri became Prime Minister and Chairman of the Revolutionary Command Council, or RCC. He started a campaign aimed at reforming Sudan's economy through nationalization of banks and industries, as well as some land reforms. He used his position to enact a number of socialist and pan-Arabist reforms. In 1970, Numera ordered an aerial bombardment on Aba Island, which killed several thousand Ansar, members of the Uma party which opposed him. Later in 1971, he was elected president, winning a referendum with 98.6% of the votes. He then dissolved the RCC and founded the Sudanese Socialist Union, which he declared to be the only legal political organization. In 1972, he signed the Addis Ababa Agreement, whereby autonomy was granted to the non-Muslim southern region of Sudan, which ended the first Sudanese civil war and ushered in an 11-year period of peace and stability to the region. In 1973, Nimeri drafted a new constitution which declared Sudan to be a democratic socialist state and gave considerable power to the office of president. In 1977, a national reconciliation took place between Sadiq al-Mahdi, the leader of the opposition who was based abroad, and Nimeri. A limited measure of pluralism was allowed, and Sadiq al-Mahdi and members of the Democratic Unionist Party joined the legislature under the umbrella of the Sudan Socialist Union. Hassan al-Turabi, an Islamic scholar and leader who had been imprisoned and then exiled after the May Revolution, was invited back and became Justice Minister and Attorney General in 1979. Numeri was one of only two Arab leaders who maintained close relations with Anwar Sadat after the Camp David Accords of 1978. He attended Sadat's funeral in 1981. In 1981, Umeri, pressured by the public and still president of Sudan, began a dramatic shift and allied himself with the Muslim Brotherhood. In 1983, he declared Sharia, or Islamic law, throughout the country. The administrative boundaries of the South were also reformed. In violation of the Addis Ababa Agreement, he dissolved the southern Sudanese government. This triggered a renewal of the Civil War, the Second Sudanese Civil War. In 1984, he declared a state of emergency, giving special powers to the military. Shortly thereafter, on the 6th of April, 1985, while Numeri was on an official visit to the United States of America, a bloodless military coup led by his defense minister, General Abdel Rahman Swar Aldab, ousted him from power. At the subsequent elections, Sadiq al-Mahdi became prime minister. In 1986, Sadiq formed a coalition government comprised of the Umma Party, the National Islamic Front, the Democratic Unionist Party led, and four small southern parties. On June 30, 1989, his government was overthrown in a coup led by Brigadier Omar al-Bashir. The post of prime minister of Sudan was then abolished. Omar Hassan Ahmad al-Bashir is the seventh president of Sudan and head of the National Congress Party. He came to power in 1989 when he led a group of officers in a military coup that ousted the government of Prime Minister Sadiq al-Mahdi. Since then, he has been elected three times as president of Sudan. In October 2005, al-Bashir's government negotiated an end to the Second Sudanese Civil War leading to a referendum in the South, resulting in the separation of the South into the separate country of South Sudan. 
One of the crises in contemporary Sudan is in the Darfur region. Clashes in Darfur are not between tribes of Arab or African origin, but rather between farmers and pastorals vying for the area's meager water and grazing resources. Intertribal clashes known to be a frequent phenomenon of the past. However, the armed rebellion in Darfur erupted in earnest in February 2003. The conflict in Darfur has resulted in death tolls of about 10,000. The civil war has displaced over 2.5 million people out of a total population of 6.2 million in Darfur, and has created a crisis in the diplomatic relations between Sudan and Chad. The rebels in Darfur lost support from Libya after the death of Muammar Gaddafi and the collapse of his regime in 2011. In July 2008, the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, or ICC, Louis Moreno Ocampo, accused al-Bashir of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes in Darfur. The court issued an arrest warrant for President al-Bashir on the 4th of March 2009 on counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity, but ruled that there was insufficient evidence to prosecute him for genocide. <laughs> However, on the 12th of July 2010, the court issued a second warrant containing three separate counts. The new warrant, as with the first, was delivered to the Sudanese government, which did not recognize it, nor the ICC. The indictments do not allege that Bashir personally took part in such activities. Instead, he is suspected of being criminally responsible as an indirect co-perpetrator. Some international experts think it is unlikely that the prosecutor Ocampo has enough evidence. The court's decision is opposed by the African Union, League of Arab States, Non-Aligned Movement, and the governments of Russia and China. According to Dr. Abdullah al-Ashal, professor of international law at Cairo University, charges of committing genocide and war crimes leveled against Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir by the Prosecutor General of the International Criminal Court, or ICC, are illegal and politically motivated under pressure from the United States. Al-Bashir is the first case in history for which the ICC issued a request to arrest a sitting president. For some, this is a very interesting precedent and indicates that there is a lot of politicization of the court. China expressed grave concern over the ICC move, saying it would undermine peace efforts in Darfur. The move was criticized for dealing with Sudan irresponsibly. The timing of the charge was also interesting. The charge was made when efforts were made to bring peace to Darfur. Not only did the African Union, or AU, and the Arab League take up the issue, it called on the prosecutor to withdraw the indictment. International experts and media commentators also took the ICC prosecutor to task over his ill-conceived and dangerous move, urging him to abandon it, at least for the time being. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan went to the Sudanese capital Khartoum on December 27, 2017, for an official two-day visit to strengthen ties between the two countries. Erdogan and his Sudanese counterpart Omar al-Bashir visited Swakin Island on the Red Sea. The island is of high importance to Sudan because it lies at the crossroads between Saudi Arabia and Port Sudan, Sudan's largest port, located just north of the island. Saukin Island used to be an important point in the journey of Muslim pilgrims traveling from African nations to Mecca and Medina to perform the Hajj, and for traders from East Asia to Africa and Europe. During the Ottoman era, Turks constructed a mosque on the island for the Hanafi and Shafi Islamic schools of thought, which Erdogan and al-Bashir visited together. After the visit to Sakin Island, Erdogan gave a speech at Khartoum University, where he requested Bashir to allow Turkey to restore artifacts on the island. The Turkish Cooperation and Coordination Agency, TIGA, and the Ministry of Culture and Tourism will restore the Ottoman relics there, including a 300-room caravansaray, or inn. TIGA has been operating on the island since 2011 and has already restored the Hanafi and Shafi mosques. When the entire restoration project is completed, 
Turkish pilgrims traveling to Mecca will be able to fly to Sudan to visit historical sites and then go to Jeddah by ship, thus reviving the Ottoman ancient pilgrimage route. Sudan is a country with huge potential. It is strategically located as a cultural bridge between the Arab Middle East and the African continent, and a geographical bridge between the Mediterranean and Central Africa, stretching along the Nile River system and bordering on the Red Sea. Ultimately, the challenge for Sudan is to ensure its sustainable growth by finding solutions to the problems related to the legacy of unfair sanctions imposed by the West and harmonizing the conflicting interests of its diverse population. For this to happen, Sudan also needs support from its historically brotherly countries, like Turkey.